fat activists invented body positivity, in particular, fat black women. I could have my tummy out, even if it's just on TikTok for clout. And if you got something to say, shut your mouth, cause I'm a hot ass bitch. I'm a hot ass bitch. about the shenanigans on Twitter when Fat Fab Feminist tweeted about it. Um, skinny people using this song specifically about growing up as a fat person um, to talk about their teeth and how they're too skinny and... Uh. It's such a great analogy for where mainstream body positivity is now compared to what it was intended for. It was created to liberate the most marginalized of bodies, you know, black, brown, disabled, fat, super fat bodies. and. Now it's been watered down to being about self-love and body image. This song isn't for you. This song isn't for you. Yes, I'm gatekeeping. Yes, I'm gatekeeping this. This is specifically about growing up fat and being fat. I just really wish thin people would stop commandeering these things and these movements. Inserting yourself, taking up too much space. I would like to talk very quick about something that annoys me. And I'm going to call it thin splaining. I just kind of, it's the idea that pe fat people like have no idea how to be thin and that's why we're fat. So people, or like that we just don't understand health and that's why we are the way that we are. So they want to add their tips saying that it's not appropriate to talk to your loved ones about their body or their weight gain or loss. And some people are like, what if I want to talk to my partner about it? Because health risks run in their family. It's their family. Who told you about the health risks? Do you think they don't know? Why do you need to talk to them about it? I made a video where I said, you can decline getting your weight taken at the doctor's office. And so many people jumped in to say, unless you have anesthesia, unless you're getting a prescription for medication, unless it's this, unless it's that. And I'm like, fat people know when it's medically necessary. Stop. I made a video saying that there are no diseases exclusive to fat people, which there are absolutely not. And people want to say, um, it can actually be a risk factor for other diseases like we don't already know. People have literally been saying this shit to me since I was seven years old. I know. I don't need your helpful input. <laughs> really trying not to be in my feelings about this but as a fat person working in corporate America you know I'm working a remote job that I thought didn't have any travel so far it has had a lot of travel with the first being getting sent to Chicago with a week's notice. Um, I never actually ended up making it. I have another video about that with Spirit Airlines, but just they want to schedule something in May and then in June, which are like less than a month away. And I mean, luckily I don't have kids. I have dogs, but I'm also a fat person in America. And it is not easy 
as a fat person to travel. So I either get choice one, humiliating myself on an airplane to fit in a seat that I know, I know I can't fit in. So either I humiliate myself in front of my company by asking them to reimburse not just one seat, but two seats for the flight there and the flight back. Or I spend a lot of my own personal money and time taking a road trip to get there because that's what I've generally done when I needed to travel places. I've done road trips or I choose to attend everything virtually, which is barely attending at all because I miss the whole point of it, which is like team bonding. You can't really team bond when everybody is in person and you are there in a computer. <sighs> like, yeah, Sure, whatever, I'm this weight, I chose to be this weight, yeah, whatever, if we wanna go with that argument. But like, I can't lose all this weight by May in, I don't know, like what that, four days, three days. So like, as a fat person in corporate America, what am I supposed to do? What are my options here? And then what, do I put in a disability accommodation for being fat? There are worse things to be than fat. Let's stop acting like the worst thing. Someone can be as fat. They could be racist or they could be mean or they could be the type of person who throws litter on the street or they could hate dogs or chew with their mouth open. Basically, if they're not should be worrying about your damn self. We gotta talk about the reality of weight loss. Weight loss is a very funny thing, especially in American culture, because it almost has become a myth. We have this idea that when you lose weight, you become a more righteous person, you become more moral, you have better self-control. And we have these popularized figures who are like influencers, uh, like almost weight loss influencers, people who have lost hundreds of pounds. And we look at them and we're like, wow, they've done so great and they're living such a better life. But what we don't talk about is we do not really have the science to back any of this up. What do I mean by that? Well, scientifically speaking, most diets fail. This isn't something where I'm saying like, oh, most crash diets fail. Most diets, you know, that people do for one or two weeks fail. Um, almost all diets fail long term. And this includes stuff like lifestyle changes. A lot of people are like, oh, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle change. Um, th that fails too. You can look this up, but there was a study done by a Norwegian, I believe it was Norwegian, um, obesity clinic, and they took a bunch of obese people and they had them in a very comprehensive program. This was like, it included therapy, it included long-term treatment, it included everything. And they were just trying to get them to lose just like a little bit of weight, not like hundreds of pounds. Long-term, within a year, 80% of the people gained the weight back. And keep in mind, this is, everything is correct. These are obesity experts. These are people that, you know, spend their whole lives researching obesity and trying to get people to make healthy changes. And they could not get these people to keep the weight off. Even when it comes to extreme stuff like bariatric surgery, there is still a high rate of failure. There is still a lot of people that gain weight back after weight loss surgery. I don't, I'm not saying that it's impossible to lose weight at all. I think there are people who are able to lose weight, but keeping that weight off long term is extremely difficult. You can look at some of the weight loss influencers that have lost a lot of weight and you will notice that long term, like 10 years out, a lot of them gain a lot of weight back. So we're in a situation where we've romanticized the idea of weight loss and we've made it seem like once you lose weight, that's it, your life is going to improve when in reality, um, it's more like eventually you will gain the weight back. 
we simply do not have the scientific proof that you can lose a tremendous amount of weight and keep it off long term. Even keeping off like five pounds is really hard. With all of this in mind, I think it's unfair for people that are thin to expect fat people to magically lose weight and keep that off. Because until science catches up and we come up with some better way for people to lose weight, it's really just not happening right now. So yeah, I would just keep that in mind if you're trying to lose weight.